Hello, my name is Terry and I'm one of the product managers at IPVanish. Today I want to show you how to use the IPVanish VPN application for the Apple TV. When Apple released tvOS 17, the latest version of the Apple TV operating system, they unlocked a whole new functionality, the ability to use a VPN for improved privacy while watching content. First I want to quickly walk you through how to use the IPVanish application. You'll need to download it from the Apple App Store first, then you'll need to create an account at IPVanish.com. Upon opening the application, you'll see a list of countries and cities that IPVanish maintains endpoints in. In total, there are 85 different VPN endpoints around the world that you can use, such as Adelaide, Australia, Amsterdam, Netherlands, Ashburn, United States. Now, you can actually add each location as a favorite location by long pressing the action button, hit add favorite, and you can now see I have Adelaide, Australia, Amsterdam, Netherlands, and Ashburn, United States as my favorite locations. In this instance, though, I'm actually going to connect to the optimal location, which is the location that IPVanish determines is the best location to you for you. In this case, being based in Cleveland, connects me to Detroit, and I've been connected for five seconds, and my IP, the VPN IP address is there. Before I proceed, I want to go over why using a VPN on your Apple TV is so important. The very first reason is personalized advertising. How do advertisers personalize this data? They do this by your IP address. The way this works is they place a pixel on their website which captures your IP address. Then when you're streaming media on any device in your household, they match your streaming IP to the IP that you use when visiting the site. They then show you an advertisement for the service. Now to calculate the ROI, or the return on investment, of their television advertisement, the same pixel that initially captured your IP looks to see if you visit the site again and make a purchase. Second, your TV here may actually be selling your data. Many TVs are now sold at a loss. Manufacturers make up that loss by collecting data on your television usage, the data collected will be dependent on the manufacturer, but in theory, most TVs are capable of collecting audio, video, and TV usage data. Now, when you're not using a VPN, this data can then be combined with other data by matching from other devices sharing the same IP, as would be the case when you're on your home Wi-Fi. This might include things like your web browsing activity, your geolocation activity from your phone, and of course, your social media activity. Now, I want to be tr completely transparent. A VPN doesn't totally solve this risk but it does muddy the data and means that you can't be personally targeted anymore. This is because when you use IPVanish, your personal IP address is masked using an IPVanish IP address, which is shared amongst our entire customer base. When this happens, it means that the advertisements shown aren't specifically targeted to you anymore and instead become more generalized data. Now, what's the risk of personalized advertising? I'll share a more lighthearted example. Last Friday, friends of mine, friends of mine were engaged, and while it was meant to be a complete surprise, she knew the entire time. This was because the prior night, as they were watching streaming television, they were shown an advertisement for engagement rings, and as she put it, Mike, the turned out fiance, got very awkward and silent. The next day, when they went on this totally unplanned hike, she knew what was about to happen. Now I'm going to switch sides, and what I want to do is I want to show some of the advanced functionality of the Apple TV itself. So, when you go to the settings, and you go to users and accounts, you can see that you can have multiple users set up. So for example, my default user is the IPVanish USA user. I have an additional user of IPVanish UK. And you can always validate this because when you go to the App Store and go to Apps, you can then see the primary USA apps. So you can see here I've got Max, Disney Plus, Peacock, Hulu. Now when you go to Games, you can see the price is shown in the US dollar. Now I'm going to go back to users and accounts. I'm going to switch the user to the IPVanish UK user. I'm going to go back to the App Store. Go to Discover. And you can see things like Now TV, ITVX, uh, Channel 4, and BBC iPlayer, which are all common in the UK. And when I go to Games, you can see the price is in the pound sterling. Now I will want to warn, you will need an app an address, an actual physical address, not an IP address in this case, but a physical address in each of the locations where you want to establish an iCloud account. This is because that's how they determine what app store library you get. Now, one of the other functions I want to show you is how to do a forced close. Now, you might want to do a forced close because at certain times you might receive an error, such as the content is unable to load, or you get the incorrect library of the content that you expect. So you may want to force close the application. The way you do that is you double click on the button that looks like a mini TV on your Apple TV remote, 
and then you swipe upwards and you can force close the applications. Then they'll reload and hopefully they connect correctly or they connect you to the correct library. As always, we appreciate your business at IPVanish. This is our first video, so I personally welcome your feedback and encourage any ideas that you have. You can interact with myself and the IPVanish team at our newly established subreddit on reddit.com at IPVanish official.